What's up guys? In today's video, we go deep sea fishing on our center console and we were after one particular fish and we love when a plan comes together. And in the cooler, we have got a really beautiful, gorgeous wahoo that we caught deep sea trolling. And we're gonna show you exactly how we caught this fish. I'm gonna show you exactly how to clean this beautiful wahoo. And then in the kitchen, cooking with pudding is gonna make us something delicious. So this is wahoo catch clean cook. The adventure begins right now. Camera's on. Can we get that up? No, it's good. Camera's on. Do you want me to do the intro? All right, I got a bite. You want me to do the intro? Slow down a little, yeah, go ahead. All right. What's up, everyone? Dar sizzle and pudding coming at you from our home waters here in Boyan. Slowing down, slowing down. It's an afternoon session for us today. You guys usually see us first thing in the morning. And today we decided to come out here on an afternoon troll to target collegics. I don't really want to jinx it, so a W, which Ryan might put it on the screen here, bonitas, tunas, all that good stuff. And we just got our first bite of the day. Brian's a little faster. It up. Faster? Yes. All right. Keep the boating gear when you have a fish on. Keep that line tight. So the real is Yep. Okay. All right, here. What are we doing? You doing right, it? Or me? it? All right, he's running, he's running. Hold on. We're gonna slow down a little bit, just a tad. We also have Brian's and Candy with us here. She's not on the screen at the moment. Good speed? You can go slow down a little. A little more? Yeah. Okay. Good That's speed. good right there. All right. What do I got, Sizzle? What? What do I got? I don't know. I just saw it. You got what we want. Yeah. What do you want to do? Right through the door, I think. Yeah, app them? Small enough. No, right through the door. Better stick them. fish. Wow. Look at that. Straight to the hook here. We're not using any wire. We're using 60 pound fluoro and you can see that just fish got hooked. Absolutely perfect. That's how you do it. I'm shaking right now with the adrenaline. <laughs> that was epic. Huge. Yes. Wow. All right, let's pick up this big girl and show you guys. All right. Chill out, buddy. Chill out. Chill out. Nice oh. fish. Nice right, fish. Can you hold, the wheel? Can you hold the wheel just point that direction. Yeah. All right. This fish just went crazy, jumped all over the place, but that is our wahoo we've been due for one for quite a while been out here many days trolling for them with no luck and what i said say earlier the afternoon troll already just paid off we're one and oh for the first fish you can see all that water coming out of his mouth that means we pulled him through the water correctly keeping that boating gear and the water gets in that stomach and you're just able to reel in that fish no problem but there he is yes wahoo let's get another one What's the best time to catch another one? When you catch one. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Nice job, Dar Sizzle. That was epic. Now, you see you guys watched our other video. We got plan A, B, and C. Yep. That was three days ago. And today we, we came out on the right time. We knew it was going to be a night bite, a full moon tomorrow. And the major was right now, but checking the fish angler app. And just plan came together and nailed it. So yeah. Sometimes plan A works, sometimes plan A don't. But you guys just keep going. That's, all, that's what happens. That was awesome. Right, Aunt Candy? That was awesome. Skid number. Want to mention Aunt Candy single? <laughs> Come on, Aunt Candy, everybody. She's a young 60. She just moved to Stewart. If your boat is over 30 feet and you're a homeowner, you can leave a message in the comments on a YouTube video. She comments all the time. You'll see her in there. What's your last name? Raider? Yes. Raider. Are you on YouTube on your real name? There you go, you'll see it. Again, 30 foot minimum and a homeowner. Don't, don't give us any crap, all right? She's not, she's not playing, she's from New York. You don't need your Florida boy names with your Gnu's and your Carolina Skiffs. Forget it. Forget it. 
Is the fish on? Yeah. All right. We got a fish on, guys. Let me know what you want me to do. I think. It's tiny. This is a good speed, right? Yeah, I, I, it's, not, it's like tiny. Yeah, planer just popped. Getting late. Got a minor moon phase. Just started by looking at the fish angler app. And Brian's taking off the planer right now. Got it? Yeah. Here? I got oh, it. I just felt like it popped. Oh, it's blackfin. Yeah, buddy. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Get him in the boat. Get him in Stop the boat. Trying. Get him in the boat. Yeah, buddy. Nice. As I called too. Nice. Another species in the boat. Wow. We got low light conditions. That's a wow. nice blackfin on a pink sea witch, which we've had caught them before on a planer. Wow. Now we got another fresh sushi fish in the boat. Beautiful. How cool is that? What's the limit on that? Limits oh, on limits on blackfin tuna. There's actually new restrictions on them. Uh, can Kenny just asked me what's the size limit? But you're allowed to keep them that size. And only think I, you got to look it up. But for your area in particular, but I know they just put limits on them. So I think like it's make, I might be incorrect, like five or ten per person or something like how that. How deep? What is it? I'm sorry. How deep? How deep? We're deep. Uh, that fish was caught in 340. All right. We're around the same depth that we caught the wahoo at. So. Size? Yeah, you can basically keep any size, but now they just have limits. Before there was no limits on blackfin, but now there is. But again, that's a nice fish. People have been catching them. And because we have low light conditions, the, the blackfin are chewing. So pretty nice. Brian's going to bleed it right now. And uh, just basically take the Smith knife and cut its gills, bleed it out, and it's going to make it excellent sushi. Oh, by the way, tell them about your shirt. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, this shirt, nope, it's a camo, great camo. We have just a couple left on the website, along with other Darcy's great stuff, but uh, double X, triple X, and quadruple X are left. And this shirt, but also check out the website for all Darcy's handmade jewelry and other good stuff too. There you go. Get that cool camo on the sleeves. There you go. <laughs> all right, you better get that lure back out. We got like 30 minutes left in the miner, and the sun's gonna set. All right, guys, I'm gonna go over this whole process of how you catch a ton of fish on a pink sea witch. Darcy makes these on the strip. I'll put a link up here to that video. Here we go. All right, here you can see we got our pink, we got our uh, strip, double hook rig, and a piece of uh, copper right through the eye, okay? We take our Smith's knife and put a little hole in the top. Up there, as we put our, we can put our copper through here. Boom, 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 pull it through. I, like to, I just hold it here, wrap it around. No big deal, no big deal. Now I'm gonna hold this. I'm gonna hold, see where this measures out right to there. Stick it through, pull it through. Bring this hook down, hook myself. See, I can see this is gonna go right about here. Put it right here. Push it through. All right, she's all rigged. Here's my pink sea witch. She's gonna come down like this. Okay, I'm right by the engine. I'm gonna show you how we put it out. First thing you're gonna do is put it in the water to make sure it swims good and it's perfect. A lot of Googans don't do this. All right, now I'm gonna let it out. I got a bridle on here to hold my planer. It's a number eight planer. Boom, boom, boom. Let me show you how that works. I just showed my aunt, but here's a planer. It's got these two clips on here. It usually goes like this. To give it some slack, this weight goes like this. Now it goes deep. It goes deep, it goes down, all right? So let's, we're gonna hook this one on first. Long line clip, right on there. Get the other one. It's getting a little dark. Long line clip, goes on there, you see? Yeah. Now when I give it slack, it's gonna go like this and go down. All right, here we go. You see that caught? I'm gonna put the drag up until it stops clicking. If it's creeping a little bit once in a while, it's catching. That's all you want it at. Oh, get a little higher. I'm going into the car right now, so the drag's gonna be a little higher. All right? All right, guys, we're back at the house, of course. 
and it's another rainy day here in South Florida, so I want to get this fish done. Um, obviously the next day, because I didn't fly them in the pitch dark and we can't make an awesome video for you guys, but I just got the weigh scale on them and I set off shore, he'd probably be around 20 pounds. So let's see what the official weight of this fish is. Ugh. Got fish guts on me. Looks like he's right at 25 pounds, which is once again, a nice fish for this area. So let's go ahead and drag him over to the filet table and get this bad boy cleaned up. All right, just give them a little wash down right there. They have very, very tiny scales and like this black coating comes off of them. So I just like to get them nice and clean before I go ahead and fillet this beautiful fish. And of course, like I said, I want to get it done before it rains too, because I really don't want any fresh water touching the meat of this delicious sushi fish, mainly because it's a sushi fish. And you guys know, I've been telling you over time that anytime fresh water comes in contact with the fresh meat of your catch, it has to do something with osmosis and the fresh water enters the cells of the meat and makes it taste not as delicious as you would like. But you can go ahead and research that. I'm not a scientist. Uh, so just getting my seven inch blade ready from Smith. Smith Consumer Products are my go-to knives. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking about the Dar Sizzle knives, which I don't even have any in my possession yet. But guess what? They are available for pre-order right now on their website. And of course, you can go ahead and buy this seven inch go-to great knife again this is not the dar sizzle knife but this is my go-to knife for years now and i love it um, so i'm just getting it ready on the trihone sharpener as you can see we got a sharpening stone here pretty much ready to go it's got a coarse a medium and a fine side and it just takes some practice to learn how to fillet on a to learn how to sharpen on a stone but of course you guys know a sharp blade is much safer than a dull blade you're going to use less force to push it through the meat and that way you're not actually going to hurt yourself when you have a dull blade you got to use more force and then you can accidentally slip up and hurt yourself. All right, so let's pull this fish in. And they do have a seven and a nine inch blade, but again, I'm gonna go with the seven because I'm gonna show you why. It's just gonna make it easier for me. And don't forget about the promo code DARSIZZLE15. Save 15% off plus free shipping. That's gonna be linked down below if you're interested in this. And again, you're gonna use it at anything on their website and get 15% off. All right, so right behind the pec fin and then just angle it up towards the head here into the head of course we want to get as much head meat as possible and you can just feel where it goes hard to soft where the meat is and then just turn that blade around and wait till you see this delicious meat after we got done taking some pictures of this fish i tried to bleed it out right away and just made a bunch of holes in the uh, gill plates so that way it's going to make it extra delicious just run it all the way down to the tail and then right over here by the tail, they've got like these, I don't know what those are called, but these big thick things that stick out. Swordfish have those, a lot of fish have those, mackerel. And then also this tail here, you probably guys saw how it's broken off. I did find a tip in the boat from the tail when he kind of thrashed around a little bit. So that may have happened once he was caught in the boat, but I know I have caught Wahoo in the past that had messed up tails. So let's just do big strokes all the way down on this fish here and wait till you see this gorgeous meat oh this knife is so sharp i just cut through the other side wow no big deal going over the backbone now and you see how i'm really bending that knife just using the bend in the blade so i can get as close to the meat as possible now bending it back down over the spine and i really like to make sure these fish are iced down properly almost to the point where they're frozen it's going to make it much easier for you to fillet and just overall a better experience. And then we'll just take this whole side off at the same time. But look at how amazing that meat looks. It's been a while since we caught a really nice Wahoo in front of Boyan. And this 25 pound fish is probably like the average size fish of this area. So really can't complain. Really excited when a plan comes together. It just makes the day that much more enjoyable. And it was awesome having Ann Candy on the boat with us as well. All right, that's about it. Look at that gorgeous loin right there. Sick. All right, we're gonna put her to the side over here. But this, these loins just glisten in the sun. It's just a powerful muscular fish, just straight muscle. So we're just gonna put this to the side, switch it out. 
bring this one closer. And then now what we're gonna do, see the black on my hands? That's like all the black stuff that comes off on their skin. So I'm just gonna wash my hand real quick. And now what we're gonna do is, instead of just skinning it all the way down, which a lot of people would do, I have a new technique that I've been using. I'm sure those of you that watch the channel know exactly what I'm talking about. But right now I'm gonna cut it into steak sections and basically cutting based on the thickness of the section. So I don't wanna to go too, you know, I wanna keep them even a thicknesses. So we did one, here's the next one, two, and then probably right here. All right, so now we got four sections to work with. You can smoke Wahoo. I know a lot of you guys ask us that, if you can smoke Wahoo, you definitely can. Uh, it's just something we don't want to do. I mean, we, we consider this fish not really a smoking fish. I don't know if you can see that glistening right there, like that green glistening look to it. Can you see it on the camera? I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can. But at the same time, we really like to just keep this fresh, this fish raw. We like to eat it raw and then we will sear it occasionally, but really we just like it raw. That's the best way to have this fish. If you don't like raw fish, then maybe smoking it is what works for you. So you can see I'm just going right down. The, entire, the whole entire fish has these, the bloodline right in the middle, of course. So I just cut on the outside of it and then going down right to where the skin is, turn the knife on its angle and you're just gonna skin it. This is a much easier way of skinning instead of going down the whole entire giant loin where you can easily mess up and you just work with smaller sections and this makes your life a lot easier. So you see how we just got that off and that loin looks amazing. Right here, that can just be cut out, that's no big deal. And then I have a little bit of red there, no big deal either, just cut that right out and that loin is ready to eat. That is a gorgeous sushi loin right there. All right, and then we're gonna do the same exact thing with the other side of the loin. Just turn it this way, because I'm lefty and I like to work the other way. Same exact thing. We're just gonna go down on the other side of the bloodline and outline it. And you can look and see, too, where you're gliding the knife. You see exactly where you wanna cut it. And that way there's minimal waste, too. You're not wasting a ton of meat at all. We don't wanna eat the bloodline. The bloodline's fishy. Turn the knife, go down. Turn the knife. Go down, turn the knife, go down, and there we go. There's the other loin, a little bit of red there, but again, no big deal. With a sharp knife, you just go right in there, cut it right out, and we can finish that up in the kitchen. But there's our two loins. That's what's left of the skin and the middle piece that you saw, the bloodline. So again, really no waste whatsoever. And bleeding the fish too is gonna help make that bloodline a little less. All right, so that is one steak done. Let me get it right in a bag because again, we don't catch a lot of Wahoo and this is a very special meal for us. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing you guys just saw me do. Uh, once again, check out Smith down below, the seven inch blade, uh, which is a pretty affordable knife and it works great, I love it. You guys just saw how it did the clean work. So we're just gonna put this away, finish up the rest of this beautiful Wahoo and then I'm gonna meet you guys in the kitchen for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. Thanks so much, Darcizzle, for cleaning up that Wahoo. And welcome back, guys, once again, to another episode of Cooking with Puddin. So excited that we're back. And today, of course, we're gonna be having sushi. We don't cook Wahoo around here. You know, you could do all kinds of things with it. You can put it in the oven, you can bake it, you can barbecue it, whatever you want. Whatever you do with it, don't overcook it. It's a firmer fish, like a tuna. I don't, we don't cook tuna either around here. So we're gonna do, always do sushi. And as you can see, you got a little bit of a plate mixed up here, or prepared here, and we're gonna do a little taste test. We're gonna do tuna, we get the blackfin tuna, which Darcy uh, cleaned without you looking, and I got a bunch of sushi. Now, you know, this is how I like to eat it, but I know you guys wanna see something a little bit fancier, and so we're gonna make a quick roll, just show you how to do it kinda fast and dirty, and Darcy might have to give me a couple little hints in here. And another good way to do it is to sear it. You coat it with uh, sesame seeds, get a nice big chunk of it, sesame seed it, and uh, just sear the edges of it or the sides of it real quick in a pan. And we've done some videos like that, uh, and that's also delicious. Darcy really likes it that way. But we're gonna make a quick inside out roll, and we're gonna start off with, we got uh, this paper, what's this called, Darcy? Nori. Mori? Nori. Nori, all right. We got the nori. We got the rough side up. This is gonna be an inside out, quick and dirty roll. Right, Darcy? 
We got a little water. Darcy, you can get close here. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover this with a little bit of rice. Now this is sticky rice. And all you gotta do is go down to the Publix or the grocery store and buy this and follow the directions. And we have a, a rice cooker, which really just makes it super nice all the time. And of course, all the stuff we use is gonna be in Darcy's Amazon page. So like the rice cooker is gonna be on there, the pan you guys got me, the Smith's knives, all her fishing gear, all that kind of stuff we use on the channel is gonna be right in there if you wanna get it yourself. Now, so I'm gonna leave a, one of these edges open, right? Like, yeah, yeah, both well, edges. Both edges, you're gonna leave a little space on the edges so that when you roll it, you know, they overlap like that. And with rolls, you know, rolls are just like anything else. And you can put whatever you want in here, right? Again, we're just gonna do a quick sushi, but you can put asparagus, cream, cheese, Anything you see at the sushi store, you just throw right in there. We're just doing rice and fish. We're just doing rice and fish. How's that look, our sizzle? Is that good? You I like think it? you need to put a little more, but whatever. You said <laughs> down and dirty or whatever. All right, down and dirty, like so, Pudding likes to do whatever it. Whatever you said. All right, good. So we're going to put some, now we're going to put some of these seeds on there, right? Yep. Darcy likes these seeds on just about everything, and I've been putting them on vegetables. I like roasted sesame seeds. Oh, plain. oh, I'm sorry. We should have got me roasted, you goof. Okay. Right, I'm going to put some more, I'll put some over here too. Look at that. Oh, great. All right, so now what am I gonna do, Sizzle? Flip it over. Flip it over. And we got a little, we got a mat here. Press it down. Oh, give me a chance, I'm pressing. All right. Now I'm gonna put my fish in here? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm gonna make this half, half wahoo and half tuna. Don't put it right in the middle, bring it to like one third towards you so you can roll it properly. Oh yes, another good hip tip from those says all. There you go, like that. Now just like a taco, you know, when you make your own taco at home or pizza, you think you have plenty of room to put a ton on there, but don't overdo it, don't overdo it. It's not gonna roll right. Your pizza, your stromboli, your ravioli, your taco, your calzone. It's not gonna roll right. All right, now I'm ready to roll sizzle? Mm -hmm. All right, and we're gonna use this thing. Mm -hmm. Bamboo mat. Just like rolling something else you guys might have rolled in college. Press the whole way across. Okay, whole even way across. Even pressure. Even pressure. Nice. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming along halfway decent, actually. There you go. That's nice. Look at that. You got a little thing there, so you got a lot perfect, but first time, I only do this once every couple months. Now we're going to put some tin foil on this. I'm not tin foil. What's put it away. It's you put it back. away, hold here. We're back. Just going to cover it. Uh, so we're gonna cut it in half first, right? Mm -hmm. We got a special sushi knife from Connor. Did you know Darcy's brother Connor used to be a sushi chef? Right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we're gonna double it, right? Yep. All right, see it doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too bad. Boom, we're just gonna transfer. And look at that. We got tuna, oh, sushi, sushi, tuna over here. All right, all right. Up the sizzle. I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod and Darcy and I, I'm gonna try the two different types of fish. We got the sushi roll and sashimi. Yeah. All right, we're back. Let's see what it tastes our sizzle. Is there spicy stuff in there? There is not spicy stuff in there. No spicy stuff. All right, don't block pudding, they don't wanna see me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding, they don't wanna see me. What's better than that, guys? If you've seen all our try I'm gonna try to do it the, the right way because well, I don't use it. We don't have all day for this, Star Sizzle. After all those trials and tribulations we've been having, guys. I can do it. You're incredible. Still haven't dropped it. Because you're, you're using it. You, <laughs> she was using it as a spatula. Mm -mm. Yes, yes mm -mm. you were. That's how you do it. <clears throat> it probably looks awkward because I'm lefty. Yes. Sorry, do not eat with your mouth. Chewing, you sound like a pig stuck in the mud. <clears throat> Excuse me, tuna was very good. Now I'm gonna try the wahoo. They're both good, and they're both kind of different. I'm gonna say wahoo just because I don't get wahoo too often. <laughs> but the tuna has a little more 
Tuna's more like of a, a fish taste. To to fish it. taste, right? Yeah, the wahoo is just really just like pure deliciousness. Yeah, like and the texture melt of it, in your mouth. Yeah, the text, the texture of it is just totally crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tuna is definitely like more fishy flavored, I guess. Of course, it's not bad flavor. It just tastes like more fish, and exactly like you said about the wahoo, it's just more of like a clean, delicious meat. Both mm. are excellent sushi, of course. This whole thing was full of sticky rice. Look how much is left. Like this whole entire thing was full. So that's how the much ben, the bunnies that's ate. That's how it. much sushi you've been eating. The bunnies Actually, ate he's it. been eating. No, the bunnies ate it. <laughs> but yeah, that was epic. Delicious. I both of those fish are amazing. Of course, I would again, Wahoo is my go-to there. And we're just gonna eat up as much as we can before we can't eat it raw anymore. A lot of people say to freeze it. You can do that if you want to. Not us. Um, we don't do that because it's our fresh caught fish and we know that we took care of it to kill parasites or whatever people want to say. But do what works for you. You can put a stick in the freezer and it'll make it easier for you to cut, of course. But um, yeah, we don't do it. We don't, we've never done it, so, and we're fine. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Go ahead and drop any of your comments down below. Brian's just gonna keep eating over here, not saying a word. <laughs> yeah, anyway, go to Great Way or Land Shark, Tuna, Wahoo, whatever you yeah. wanna do. Mm -hmm. So exciting, and people ask all the time, what do you guys do with that fish? We got Frank coming over to take some fish. Yep. We got the neighbors coming over to take some fish. Yep. We got the lady that watches the bunnies when we go do on adventures for you guys. Yep. Coming to get some fish, so. Exactly. The AC None guy gets fish. None of it going to waste, and the carcasses are going in traps, so stay tuned for hopefully an excellent stone crab season ahead. Cross my fingers. Yeah. Last year was terrible. But thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed and we can't wait to get back get back out there real soon. Unfortunately, the Southern Console is now in the shop. So we're just waiting oh, for yeah. that to get back out of the shop because the very next day it broke down offshore. Yes, the next day, we tried to catch a Wahoo the next day and before we put the lines out, the boat broke. We yeah. had to get towed in. Yeah, he might put a B-roll picture here. I will, I'll let you know what happens so, next time. Yeah, so the boat's in the shop and we're just gonna pray that it gets back on the water real soon. So. Until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Why are you drinking my land shark? Ew. Jeez, steals <laughs> all the food and now all my drinks. <laughs>